Zechariah chapter 9. The burden of the word of the Lord. Or, you know, it's a load. Here comes a load. In the land of Hadrick and Damascus, well, we know Damascus, shall be the rest thereof. When the eyes of man, all the tribes of Israel, that word tribes, that's a particular interest because Esau were dukes. Ishmael was princes. Israel is tribes. The New Testament book, James, is written to the twelve tribes. Gee, I wonder who Hebrews is written to. People want to ignore the words. Because today, in the modernness of what we got today, the Word of God has been changed, and the Word of God does not hold special to somebody. It's it's just a book with words. And yet the Bible tells us to study and show thyself approved unto God. Not only are we to read the Word of God, we're to study it. We're to meditate it over it. Of everything that's on this earth, Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away. Everything. But my word shall never pass away. So looking at your Bible... That's going to be in heaven. You say, which one? You know, the King James. The, well, surely not the Alexandrian Codes. The Codex Vaticanus and the Codex uh, Vaticanus. They're not going to be there. The King James Bible, the Geneva Bible, and you run that family tree all the way back to Antioch. I believe that's what's going to be in heaven. But then again, I think it was Paul, somebody tells us that the language in heaven is Hebrew. Shall be toward the Lord. That capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D is Jehovah. And Hamath also shall border thereby Tyrus. It's a city and it will be wiped off the map. Zidon. I think that's where... Uh, Jezebel, or Jezebel has a relation to Zidon. I could be wrong on that. Though it be very wise. Hey, they're smart. <laughs> Your wisdom ain't going to do you no good. You know, Babylon was a great wise that the hanging gardens of Babylon, I say, is one of the seven wonders of the world. And here this guy, he, he made these extravagant garden for his wife. And they talk about this one gate, and I don't know much about it, but there's a gate that they had replica, and it's to their god, I forget, or goddess. I think it's blue or green, something like that. Scientists now say, well, we know how they built the pyramids. No, you don't. You don't know nothing. And you look at the pyramids, and you look at the spirit. You know, that, whatever it was, that took wisdom. That took understanding. That takes knowledge. We have a, a condo right here in, in Daytona Beach. And it was cement trucks out. I mean, he just had a parade of cement. And all of a sudden, the building stopped. And they ran out of money. And now the city's like, get back, build that thing. Or, you can't even finish a condo unit. With cranes and dump trucks and welders and, and uh, uh, engineers and... And you got American pride, and I'm trying to say these wisdom and pyramids in Babylon and Babel. Where are they today? You know, you take I curse out off Hitler for cursing the Jews. But I'll tell you one thing: it took a wise man with a big mouth for all the damage he done. You realize Adolf Hitler never shot a gun, and all the people he killed. And, and, and you're, you know, Stalin and all that. And Alexander, listen, you don't become somebody who you were. Alexander the Great. I don't know how great he was, but you have to have wisdom. 
And the thing I'm, I'm looking at with Tyrus and Zion, where are they now? America, we got these colleges and universities, and we don't even know what sex we are. They don't even know who they're supposed to marry. America's fallen. Tyrus did build herself a stronghold. Tyrus was two cities. When Nebuchadnezzar came in and destroyed the coast town of Tyre, they went out and built themselves on the rocks on the island in the Mediterranean Sea. Well, Alexander the Great came and took the ruins of the old Tyre and built the causeway. <laughs> That's all prophecy. And he took silver as dust and fine gold as the mire of the streets. And that's the description of Solomon in Jerusalem. And in America, we got all this gold, we got all this silver, we got all this money. And they don't even know today. They, the old church, all the gold in Fort Knox. They don't even know there's even gold there anymore. Behold, the Lord will cast her out. All the fame, all the wealth, all the riches. And if you are an enemy of God, and if you are an enemy of Israel, you're gone. And will smite her power in the sea, that's Tyre. And she shall be devoured with fire. Ascalon shall see it. This is along the sea coast of the Mediterranean. The, the, the Philistine. And Gaza shall also see it and be very sorrowful. And Ekron. And her expectation shall be ashamed. They will see God destroy a city and they'll look at themselves like we in trouble. America has got so much pride. We study history. We know about Sodom Gomorrah. But we refuse it. It'll never happen to us. How many times have you read that in the Bible? God don't see us. They're even changing history. And the king, no small king, shall perish in Gaza. And Ascalon shall not be inhabited. That's the Philistines. Uh oh. I'm on this word. They bastards. I wonder what some of your Baptists think about saying bastard. I heard it the, well, you know, you know, the Bible says piss, but we ought not use that word. It's a Bible word. A lot better than the words you get on the television set. You know how close Jesus came to calling that woman a female dog? He did call her a female dog. He just didn't use the B word. And I, I, that was probably sacrilege in some of the Baptists, like you said. A bastard is a child that has been born to a woman and to a man that are not married. Our nation is full of bastards. Mm -hmm. And a lot of bastards in America have been aborted. Well, in Ashdod, again, that's Philistine, they were cut off. Now, that cut off, in the law for the Jew, cut off means you died, you went to hell, do not collect 200, and do not pass go. That would be a damn, a curse. I can't even think what the words would be today. That cut off. That is, Jesus said, depart from me, workers of iniquity, I never knew it. That's a cutoff. The pride of the Philistines. Listen, if the Philistines got pride, there it is right there, look at it, black and white. The burden of the Lord, verse 1. If God destroys the Philistines for their pride, What on earth do you think that God's going to do to America and her pride? 
She's got pride in the in the presidency. She's got pride in her flag. She's got pride in her constitution. She's got pride in Mount Rushmore. She's got pride in the Statue of Liberty. She's got pride in who and what we are. Well, the Bible says with pride comes destruction. And even Christians, and I'll, I'll put the quotes, because maybe they're not Christians, maybe they aren't Christians, they would think that that Bible verse doesn't go for them. And we are in a church age today, the lad to see, there's much pride. Now, the Christian ain't damned for pride. He, he loses out the judgment seat of Christ. Or he even the fact is that maybe he's not even saved in the first place. We got the greatest church. We got the greatest constitution. We got we got the greatest pastor. Lord God, we, we thank you for coming into the house of the Lord. There's a Baptist right down the street. There's a Baptist right in the next city. Well, what are you talking about, the only one? That's how you say it. We, the only, you sound like you're the only one. I will take away his blood out of his mouth, murder, and his abomination between his teeth. He's in feasting and enjoying uh, what God says an abomination. That's throughout the law. That's not just divorce. That's not just adultery. There were other things in the law that was an abomination. But he that remaineth, even he shall be for our God. So those that remain are going to stand up for God. He shall be as a governor in Judah, Ekron, and as a Jebusite. Now the Jebusites were the ones that inhabited Jerusalem. When David had Joab conquer Jerusalem. That's the Jebusite. They were the Canaanites in the land. I will encamp about my house. One house, temple, God. Because of the army. Because of him that passes by. Because of him that returneth. No oppressor shall pass through them anymore. There's coming a day with no oppression. For now have I seen with my eyes. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. That's always a second advent, millennial passage. O daughter of Jerusalem, behold, now this is important, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation lowly riding upon an ass and upon a colt of the foal of an ass. We know where that stands. We know that's quoted in the gospel. We know when Jesus rides that ass, it quotes from Zechariah, it identifies who that person is. Zechariah says it is the King, capital K. That's Jesus. That's a prophecy of one of 48 prophecies of the first advent that comes to pass. That's a capital K. That's Jesus. That's not found in the New World Translation, which is the Jehovah Witnesses, which deny Jesus that is God. Now, where you find places in the Bible that say King David, you will see a capital D, but you will not see a capital K. The only way you'll find a capital K in a normal sense is when it follows a period and it begins a sentence. Which primary usually don't. Would have a king, the king, and king, but king. When you if you have a concordance that can do a proximate do a exact search. I want you to look up the word in the Bible, King with a capital K. Of the 66 books, you'll find all those references points to the king that we're reading about now, that's Jesus. That the Bible calls him the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, that Pilate wrote above the head of Jesus, this is the King of the Jews. And he tells him, hey, listen, I wrote what I wrote. 
Now the Jehovah Witnesses, the New World Translation, does not say that. That does acknowledge. Now, just happened to be that I'm reading my Bible today after I do this. And going to Psalms chapter, we're not going to look at them all, but Psalm 68, I read today by God's chance. Verse 24. Now you will do a search of all the places of capital K. You will find what we're going to look at in this verse. Psalm 68, 24. They have seen thy goings, O God. Even the goings of my God, my capital K, King. There's Jesus. There's God, one and all. God wasn't their king anymore. They wanted Saul. They wanted David. The book of Judges, they did that which right in their own eyes. God was to be their king, but he wasn't. When he comes back, Revelation 19, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. So to deny the fact, we go back to Zechariah, that Jesus is not God, is anti-scriptural. And you do serious damage to the deity of Jesus Christ. Behold, the king cometh to thee, he is just. Having salvation, Jesus means Jehovah's saints. We read last night, God's with you. We read Emmanuel, God is with you. Listen, you got to be totally blindfolded. You're not wearing a mask over your face and your nose if you're, if you're denying this. You're wearing a mask over your eyes if you cannot see that Jesus is God. You cannot see that Thomas said, my Lord, my God, and there was no review. You cannot see, see that Jesus said, I and the Father are one. Uh, I think it was Thomas, another disciple said, well, show us the Father. He's like, uh, you're looking at him. And Second John said, this, and they come to your house, don't you even wish them good speed, have a good day, good afternoon, good night. You say, what do you do? I said, as they're walking off my, my, my driveway, I tell them, go to hell you don't believe in. And if you're going to go to my neighbor's house, I'm going to be right there with the Bible. And I, I, One day they're parked out in front of the house and I start getting their car. What are you doing? I said, I'm going to go where you guys are going to go. I'm going to pro proclaim that Jesus is God. Well, we'll leave. Have a flat tire. That's Bible. I, there's a church right here. They told me, every time you pass any kind of church, any kind of church, make sure you pray for them. All right, don't listen to Second John. And when you do, you lost your reward. He is just having the salvation. That's Jesus. Riding upon an ass. Now you say, the new Bible say donkey, because they you don't want to say ass. Well, we say bastard. We say piss. They say donkey. You know the difference between ass and donkey? I've done the study and I've been wanting to, i got to do it, finish it in PowerPoint. Donkey is a word that came later on in the English language. The first word for the animal was ass. In 1611, there was no donkey. You had an ass. And later on, just in time for the modern Bibles, you had a donkey. A donkey's an ass. You don't go running around and say your gluteus maximus. Upon the colt of the fall of an ass. That's the, the child of a donkey. Yes. I will cut off the chariot of Ephraim. Now, he's not going to send the chariot into hell. But when you go back into Pharaoh in the Red Sea, 
You know, you know what God's saying there? I'm going to break it. <laughs> and it says, as far as Pharaoh and their chariots and their, and their the thing, with, is, uh, it says something, the fact is, and it's not verbatim, but he removed the wheels. That would be a cutting off. Guy gets in the chariot and the horses go one way and the chariot goes another way. He gets in the chariot and the chariot falls apart. And the horse from Jerusalem. There's going to be no horses in Jerusalem. And the battle bow shall cut off. It's not going to work. It's going to break. He shall speak peace unto the heathen, Gentiles. His dominion shall be from sea even to sea. We're looking at the millennium right now. This is peace. There'll be no war. There'll be no chariots. Recognize it. We're going to speak peace to heathen. There'll be heathens. There'll be nations that help the Jew. His dominion, Jesus, the, the one that comes in on the donkey. From sea even to sea. Now you want to see the replacement theology in America? That is a sin. I forget the words, complete words, but isn't there a, a, a hymn of America from sea to signing sea? Hey, moron. It's an ocean. It's an ocean. It's not a sea and a sea. What you're doing is you are replacing America with Israel. We are the new Israel. God's all finished with Israel. America's the one. You found that in Massachusetts. The great Ope, whatever it was called. You see that in Utah with the morons. New England is filled with names that form the Bible. I could take you a drive and where I grew up in, in New London County, Connecticut. I could drive you around things in Jordan, Salem, Why are oh, because we're a biblical Christian nation? No, you're a replacement name. You're you are the blessings of God. From river even to the ends of the earth. As for thee also by the blood of my covenant, that's an agreement that God makes. That blood of my of thy covenant. That was the sealing. It was the, the covenant of the Passover lamb. It was the blood of the bulls and goats and lambs. It was the blood of Jesus Christ. I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein there's no water. Jesus set forth the captives. Says, well, while Jesus is dying on the cross, the graves opened up. Turn you to the stronghold, a safe place, ye prisoners of hope. I sure ain't anybody going to hell. To say that somebody's died and gone to hell and they got hope, that's an oxymoron. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. And wait till you see the blessings of the millennium. Wait till you see the blessing of the new Jerusalem, the new heavens, the new earth. Wait till you see where there's no curse and no more sin. When I have bent Judah for me, filled the bow of Ephraim, raised up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, civil war, O Greece, and made thee as a sword of the mighty men, and the Lord shall be seen over them. Well, that's Jesus. Capital L, capital O, capital. You see, that's what the Jews can understand. Here comes Jesus on a donkey. All right, he's going to kick Rome's butt. It didn't say Rome, it said Greek. And he ascends up to heaven in 70 AD. Jerusalem was destroyed by Rome. Oh, wait a minute. What happened here? 
Huh? You rejected the Messiah. And then pops up the mountain called the church that it blocks your view for a while. And the Lord shall blow the trumpet, not trump. And you'll find the trumpet in the book of Revelation written long after the church is raptured. And shall go with whirlwinds of the south. Plural. The Lord of hosts shall defend them. And they shall de devour and subdue with sink sling stones. They shall drink and be made a noise through wine. They shall be filled like bowls and as the corners of the altar. Oh, there's that temple. Noise through the wine is, it's the great harvest. They're pressing the wine. It's a celebration. The millennium. After God comes as the whirlwind, the second advent, and we're now in the millennium. And the Lord, their God, shall save them in the day as a flock of his people. There's the second advent. There's when the nation of Israel corporate is saved. I will give them a new heart. I will give them my spirit. They shall sin no more. I will forgive their sins. I will cleanse them, and they will be my people, and I will be their God. And they shall be as stones of a crown, lifted up as an ensign, a sign upon his land. That's not America. There's only one his land. That's the land of Israel. Where Jesus will be the king, and the people will be the people. For how great is his goodness, how great is his beauty. Isaiah writes, Isaiah 53, there's no beauty that we desire. <laughs> oh, you wait till you see Jesus come back. You wait till he's on that white horse. You wait till he's bringing salvation to the Jews. Oh, how they will magnify him. Oh, how they will see. They won't see him as that suffering servant. They won't see him as, who do you think you are? I think Psalm says you shall see the king in his beauty. Corn shall make the young men cheerful. Boo. New wine, grapes, harvest the maids. This is a celebration of the millennium. And I forget which harvest it is, but it is those harvests circulated around the feast. How great God is. 